second public hearing for the City of Tampa's Architectural Review Commission. Welcome, everyone. I'm Shauna Boyd, tonight's chair of the commission. If you are here to speak, uh, present a project, you will have limited time to make your presentation, so we suggest being thorough but concise. When coming to the microphone, you will need to identify yourself and your relationship to the project. The commissioners will not ask any questions during your presentation. Your project should be presented in the following order. Site plan, elevations, architectural details, wall sections. Um, and then the staff, the staff will first present their staff report. Then we will ask for public comment. Um, following the presentation, the commissioners will be asking questions in the same order as the presentation. If you are here to speak for or against a project, your time will be limited to three minutes. Please state and spell your name clearly. Uh, please take the time now to summarize your comments because three minutes will go by very quickly. Following public comment, the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal. The public hear hearing will then be closed. The only comments which will be allowed after the public hearing is closed will be in response to any questions from commissioners. The commissioners will discuss the case and will make their decision based on the City of Ordinance Chapter 27 of the City Zoning Code, the design guidelines, the Secretary of Interior Standards, Historic Preservation Development Review, comments, and the testimony given at tonight's public hearing. The ARC can only act on items that are within our specific jurisdictional responsibility. Owners and agents are independently responsible to obtain any appropriate permits and or approvals. If you haven't already done so, please silence your cell phones. At this time, we'll introduce the commissioners starting on my left. Dan Myers, architect. Ashley DeCubis, I'm an attorney. Stephen Sutton, I'm also an architect. I also hold the architectural historian chair. And with city staff tonight, we have Dennis Fernandez, Elaine Lund, Beverly Jewisak, and city attorney Kamaria pettis -Mackle. Um, I believe now we'll move on to the minutes. I yeah. move that the minutes for the ARC public hearing of Wednesday, April 6th, 2022 be accepted as presented. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, and Dennis Fernandez with announcements. Good evening, Commissioners. Dennis Fernandez, Architects Review and Historic Preservation Manager. Uh, welcome uh, to this evening's hearing and those uh, presenters and public welcome as well. Uh, we will be handling all of our um, May cycle at this evening's hearing, so we will not be holding a uh, Wednesday night meeting on the 4th that's been canceled. Uh, because of the uh, early date of this meeting in the month, we haven't uh, received the data for our administrative approvals yet for May or for April rather. So we'll be bringing those back to you next month along with the May approvals. Uh, one um, unfortunate note, I do want to let you know that tonight will be the last meeting for your clerk, Beverly Jusak. She has been promoted in the city's purchasing department and will unfortunately be leaving us in a couple weeks for another position. So we'll be uh, seeking to uh, fill that position and uh, we'll be kind of filling the gaps for a few weeks until we're able to do that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who's going to be calling you, but someone in my office will be calling you from this, <laughs> this point forward. <laughs> uh, and with that, uh, I think we are ready to move on to conflicts of interest and ex parte communication with our legal counsel. Um, Mr. Fernandez, did we have one case for continuance? Uh, yeah, I was going to do that after the uh, okay. after continuations. Okay. Um, Kamari pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. Will the commissioners please state whether or not they have any conflicts of interest regarding any of the items that are on the agenda? No. no. I have none. Additionally, will the commissioners please state whether or not they've had any ex parte communications regarding any of the items on the agenda? None. No, no. I have none. Thank you. 
Uh, moving now to continuations, although we had no continuations on the agenda, we did receive a late um, re request for continuation. That is for the last case on the agenda, ARC 21364, for the property located at 818 South Edison Avenue. And the agent has requested to continue to the August 1st, 2022 uh, public hearing at 5.30 p.m. And if we could uh, form a motion for that, please. I move for a continuation of ARC 21364 to the June date. Uh, August 1st. August 1st. Uh, Architectural uh, Review Commission public hearing uh, to be scheduled for 5.30 in the afternoon. I would just add that that's at 5.30, 5.30. in the address. Uh, that would be 818 South Edison Avenue. A second motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, and with that, we are ready uh, for the swear-in. Uh, anyone in the audience who's going to be providing testimony today, if you would please stand and raise your right hand for the swearing. Can you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you'll be providing will be the truth, the nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. do. Thank you. And with that, we are ready for our first case this evening. Good evening, Commissioners. Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff. The first item that we have on the agenda to hear tonight is case ARC 22-145, located at 1701 North Florida Avenue. Um, this is actually the entire block bounded by Florida Avenue on the west, Morgan Street on the east, Oak Avenue on the north, and 7th Avenue on the south. The request is um, for new construction for an apartment complex with structured parking and storefronts along with site improvements. This is a, um, this property has a PD zoning which was previously um, reviewed by this board and was approved by city council. Um, at this time I will move into the photo presentation. If you see on your screens is the 1920s Sanborn map of the subject area. Um, the block is shown there in green. The red line on the map indicates the boundary of the local Tampa Heights Historic District. But again, you see Oak Avenue on the north, 7th Avenue on the south, Florida Avenue on the west, and Morgan Street on the east. And then this is the location map um, showing the entire historic district. And the subject property, again, is shown in green. You can see it's at the very south end of the district. The present-day aerial is here. Um, most of the site is vacant. There are some structures on the site. Um, one of these is a contributing structure, and it is has... Um, been proposed and approved to be relocated directly across the street to the southeast corner of Oak Avenue and Morgan Street. Again, this is another view of the subject site um, outlined in green. I'll give you a little perspective on the, uh, the lot there. This photo is looking from Florida Avenue into the subject site. This is at Florida Avenue near 7th Avenue. Moving a little bit to the north, again, looking east into the property. This view is looking south from Oak Avenue into the site. Here we are looking, um, I believe, west into the site, or maybe this is again to the south. Yes, to the south, again to the south. Sorry, we have several shots looking to the south. This is the third. Um, this is this, the historic contributing property on the site that is to be relocated. 
that's at the um, currently at the southwest corner of Morgan and Oak Avenue. Moving around to Morgan Street, this is looking into the subject site. Here we are facing west. Again, facing west. This is a little further south than the previous view. And here we are looking um, sort of north from 7th Avenue at one of the buildings that is a non-contributing structure to the district and will be demolished. Um, another non-contributing structure in the district off 7th Avenue. And this view is looking into the site again from 7th Avenue to the north. And one more shot here um, looking north from 7th Avenue near Florida Avenue. This view is looking north along Florida Avenue. And this view is looking south on Florida toward downtown. This view is looking east along 7th Avenue. And west also along 7th. And that concludes the photo presentation. So at this time, I'll ask the applicant to um, come forward and present their request. Thank you. Good evening, board. I'm Saul Fleischman, Jr. Fleischman Garcia Maslowski Architecture, 324 South Hyde Park Avenue. I'm the consulting architect specifically having to do with construction in the Tampa Heights Historic District. We heard you last time we were in front of the ARC. Yeah, we got a shellacking. And we've done our homework and we were, were appearing back before you and we've covered all the items in the staff report. We have a much better quality project to present to you tonight. We've evolved from a wood frame building to a reinforced concrete block building. Concrete block, brick, stucco, hollow precast planking floors, really a first class building. Our windows are now more re recessed, so we'll get those nice shadow lines around the openings. And I've got some really interesting pictures to show you later on, which references the historic structures in the district and how it relates to our building. So without further ado, we're going to start with the site plan and move on to the elevations and then the wall sections and details. And then the historic references last. This is a much prettier site plan than you saw last time. This is actually from the landscape architect. Um, and I'll just orient you. Um, here's our building. We have Florida Avenue. We have 7th Avenue. We have Oak Avenue. We have Morgan. We've got landscaping all around. One of the really features of our project is we have a nice pocket park at the corner of Morgan and Oak Street. Uh, we also have a, re a retail arcade down at the corner of uh, 7th and Florida. And uh, it's recessed back and it's got special uh, pavers that emulate the historic brick on 7th Avenue. Okay. And it's fully dimensioned on the plans and everything. The overhangs are noted, the stoops are noted. This is a blow up of the pocket park, I'm orient it correctly. And we have uh, scored concrete uh, paver floors. Thank you, Dennis. That's good. You're here. We have real grass, real landscaping. We've got really a nice 
detail along 7th Avenue, we have uh, special concrete um, pavers that uh, in the parallel parking spaces we have. I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have about that. This is the north elevation along Oak Avenue. And then we have a blow up of a typical stoop entry to the apartments. As you can see, we have brick, we have aluminum rail and a bronze tone. We have a sloped uh, awning type roof with standing seam metal. We have a stucco soffit, so there are no nails or screws exposed in the decking above. We have wall sconces. We have our nice historic looking door and single hung, uh, the fixed glass, but they look like single hung windows flanking the door. Moving on to our west elevation, Florida Avenue. You can see the dramatic slope in the property. This is that retail arcade I referenced earlier. So this is our 7th Avenue elevation, again, considerable slope from the east down to the west. Again, our retail arcade here. As you can see, this building is broken up with different tower forms and some ins and outs to break down the scale of it. We've, we've shown some signage which will occur on the uh, horizontal projecting awning and on the wall, but on studs lifting it off the wall. This this is our Morgan Avenue or East Avenue as it was originally called elevation. You can see there's a lot of movement, different heights of roofs, and I'll show you some references to that later, references of ins and outs in the elevation. You asked us to give you all the elevations of the courtyards and areas that really uh, aren't seen so well from the street. This is on the seventh floor. This is where our swimming pool, game room, fitness, yoga, and bathroom areas are. And here's the west elevation, which is looking this way. The south elevation looking this way. The north elevation looking this way. And the east elevation looking this way. Again, our courtyard elevations, these will not be seen from the street, they're in internal courtyard, but you can see they're all in the same architectural vocabulary as the exterior elevation, brick at the bottom, stucco above, balconies overlooking it. Yet another courtyard here with the four elevations shown. One of the things you asked us to address in the staff report was how are we going to contain the lighting in the garage 
and the headlights from, from the automobiles. Well, we retained a lighting consultant named Oldner Lighting out of Dallas, Texas, and he's going to be working with us. But the concept is to provide a light up behind the drop beam so the light shines away from the opening and another one similar and then provide lighting over the aisles as opposed to facing out where it be seen by the public. There's many different lenses to select. We'll be working with Oldner on the complete design of a lighting in the parking garage to minimize light spillage into the neighborhood. Wall sections. As you can see, it's now concrete block and the hollow core floor uh, slabs with a two inch topping. Uh, you can see some of the overhangs and we'll look at those details a little closer. This is a wall section detail through one of the entry stoops, concrete stairs, aluminum railing, um, a nice awning projection with standing seam metal roof, stucco soffit. So we have some shade and shadow created. You understand how important the parking garage is. This is a section through the parking garage. As you can see, the entry has a nice projected awning over the, over the entry. And again, the lighting will be shining away from the openings. The railings will have a aluminum panel behind it so that you would not, so the lights in the cars would not shine out directly, and I'll show you um, an image of this. This is, of course, a, a fence, but it's the same concept, and we've used this on several projects when we have fences in front of garbage and so forth. We'll have the aluminum or wrought iron fence, and right behind it, we'll attach a solid panel of the same color. Works out quite nicely. These are all pretty boring, but I just wanted to show you this. This is a typical um, foundation on perimeter walls. Again, reinforced concrete block, the one inch required airspace, and then the brick on brick ties, waterproof membrane behind it. This is a section through a typical floor with the um, precast hollow metal hollow concrete deck. Um, we've got lots of these and I've, I've actually called them down so not to bore you with them, but you might be interested in this one because it shows some of our horizontal banding, which is important in the building, which is indigenous to the historic district. And this is all done with stucco and framing to create really nice shadow lines. This shows our wall cap. This is the roof. Here's a few more details. This is a section through the pro projecting horizontal awning along uh, the arcade. And then this is a section through our 42 inch high aluminum railing and I 
dashed in and noted where that solid panel would be at the parking garage only. Additional wall sections, these are through the windows. This is in our brick wall. Here's our brick white, our, our brick Rolox sill, and our window, which is projected, is recessed a minimum of four inches from the wall, four inches back from the wall. This is in the upper stucco walls. Again, the window is recessed back from the fa face of the walls. Okay. Additional details showing where the window is in relationship to the, the stucco surface, the stucco trim. Again, we have that minimum four inch recess. This is a, a detail of the brackets that occur under the soffits of the hip root towers. So they're constructed of framing and fiber cement panels and painted. This is our window elevations and schedule and our door elevations and schedule. You asked us about screening last time. We don't think screening is appropriate in the district. We have no screening on our windows. So we have single hung windows and some projecting hopper type windows, but without screen. Moving on to our materials, we've got two colors of painted stucco. We've, we've shown the color of the metal, and that's um, in the railings, and brick, and the, uh, the roof shingles. The, we have some fabric awning. And um, what does that say? The oh, it's the metal on it. It's the standing seam metal roof, silver. Again, our horizontal metal awnings with the diagonal brackets, very typical in the district. This is our storefront with uh, bronze aluminum. These are our aluminum windows with bronze aluminum. Our stucco is a three coat stucco finish, which is top quality. Uh, these are our reference, these aren't the exact shape of them, but they're referencing the corbels under the soffits on the tower, which are gonna be, uh, again, fiber cement. We have an, you know, an upward acting overhead door in front of our garbage enclosure, and we have our um, oil uh, bronze hardware. Here's our stoop entry door that this will be seen from the street. It's a combination glass and panel door. This is our typical apartment door. Again, this references our windows that are recessed, our railings, and our typical exterior lighting. And in our, um, in our balcony areas facing the interior courts, we have some horizontal uh, lap siding will not be seen from the street. 
Any questions on that part of the presentation? Our questions all come at the end. Okay. Oh, one of the things you asked us about was uh, the scoring of the new sidewalk to relate to the historic district. Um, I made a survey of the district. There's a lot of just plain old sidewalk that scored at four, six, or eight foot, but there's, there's a little bit of sidewalk at the corner of Oak and Florida on our site that is traditionally uh, broken down into about three foot by three foot squares. So we're going to do that on our sidewalks all around our property. We're going to score them into three foot by three foot or two and a half by two and a half, but approximately that size. This is at Morgan Park, some of the original sidewalks that are scored like that. Okay, let's reference some of the buildings that are in the historic district and more importantly that were in the historic district. And of course one of my favorites which was right across the street was the Tampa Heights Hospital where I was born. And these are some very interesting pictures because the Tampa Heights Hospital was five stories high. So our project, which is a maximum of seven, I mean, as far as forms and relationship, pretty close. It also has a flat roof with horizontal detailing, a flat parapet roof. And um, it's got a really nice entry stoop there and a nice water table. Um, so it's got varied roof heights, varied window patterns, and window patterns is real important. And I think this window pattern, pattern system relates to what we have as well. So here's another view, which is also important because that building had forms that projected and recessed, very similar to what we've done on our elevations. So there's great reference to our building, the old hospital. Now this building evolved over the years. This is still partially five, partially four stories. And then they filled in, so with all five stories. And they put this nice little canopy over this outdoor terrace they had. And this was built right to the property lines. As you can see, this, it was almost to the sidewalk. We have more relief than that. And then they modernized the front. They removed that elevated stoop and porch and did this contemporary. And then they did an addition to the north. And what's really interesting are these big horizontal windows in the original building and in the addition, which relates to some of our openings in our parking garage. So this has varied roof heights, flat roof parapet, varied window patterns, windows with mullions, which is really important because we have mullions, brick with cast stone trim, water table, horizontal banding. A lot of great references. And I did not know this. Look at this. That building kept expanding to the north. And here was an addition. I have not been able to find a photograph of what that looks like. But as you can see, they've accentuated the horizontal bandings. They've actually added a, 
another level, it looks like a penthouse for an elevator or stairs or maybe roof access. But um, very interesting. So we have stucco on our building, so we wanted to find some buildings that had stucco. This is at 3302 Florida Avenue, the, the old children's home building, which was of stucco, varied roof forms, varied window patterns. They had both two and three window connected, very similar to what we have, and water table at the base. I've included this because it's a building that was near and dear to my heart. This was the old Rodolf Scholl Synagogue on Palm Avenue. And the only reason I included it because to show the massiveness of a building. Of course, when I was a kid, this thing looked like it was eight stories high, but it's really about three stories high, but it's a, a, a major institutional building in the Tampa Heights Historic District with brick, precast details, tragic loss. This is another building dear to my heart, Tampa Heights Elementary School, which as most of you know, burned after Hurricane Irma, and my firm was able to rebuild the building um, to match its historic form. My mother actually went here when it was the uh, Michigan Avenue Grammar School. So this has a lot in common, being a brick building. It has some flat roofs. It's got a big hip roof. Uh, it's got in interesting window patterns with muttons. This is uh, the, the church at Florida and Palm Avenue just near our site. This thing has a lot in common as it has building forms that jog in and out subtly as ours do, different roof heights, brick with cast stone, a hip roof back behind here you can't see in this photo. This is the uh, Sanctuary Lofts building, which again is brick, precast details, flat roof with parapet, ground level entrance, since we have uh, some ground level entrances in our project as well as upstairs to a stoop. Interesting window patterns. I mean, talk about tall buildings that have a presence. This is the uh, at Florida and Francis, now Grand Cathedral Cigars. Uh, very tall buildings. Again, forms are in different planes, different roof situations, brick and precast. Um, this is a Palm and Lamar. This, this former church, one of the interesting things about this that makes it distinguished is it's got columns and an arcade similar to what we're doing at Florida and 7th. Another great stucco structure in the, in the neighborhood, 1910 Florida Avenue, the old fire station. It has a hip roof on top of the tower, um, ground level entrance as well. This is the Jefferson and Plymouth. Uh, interesting window patterns and uh, flat roof with parapet, entrance at ground level, no, no water table. So there was buildings with water tables and buildings without water tables in the district. Jefferson and Amelia, this is behind Tampa Heights Elementary School. Again, stucco, no water table, interesting window patterns, horizontal precast detailing. This is a great little building 
at Oak and Jefferson, brick and stucco detailing, uh, flat roof with parapet, entrance on ground level. You asked us for some references on shed roofs. So here's a couple of houses that have shed roofs in the district at 405 and 407 East Palm. And this little jewel at 307 East Park has a shed roof over the entrance. And I'll conclude with one of my favorite little buildings in the district, this little treasure of a building that I used to go to, the old Lee's Market at Central in Francis. Why this is relevant is because it has the horizontal awning with the diagonal struts, stucco, horizontal banding, flat roof with parapet. So there's a lot of historic references to our project. So I hope I've demonstrated that we, we heard you last time uh, and uh, we've got a super quality project with historic references to the Tampa Heights Historic District. We look forward to your questions and approval. Commissioners Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff, with the uh, staff report. Um, staff finds that this application is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines. Uh, we did meet with the applicants and um, the team putting together the project and reviewed most of the um, conditions that were in the staff report from the prior um, hearing from which this was continued last in um, from March and you'll see that the staff report in front of you today is um, significantly briefer it appears that the majority of these conditions have been met and I am happy to address any questions you have thank you very much thank you um, if anyone is here to speak for or against the project, please come up now. All right, not seeing anyone. The commissioners will begin asking questions. Anyone care to speak? Um, I noticed in the, uh, in the plans that you have a couple of caves noted off the courtyards. Could you explain those just a little bit, even though they are really outside of our purview, but if you would. Yeah. Would, would you like to yeah, handle sure. that, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt Durbin, one of the owners of the property. Uh, so uh, in Tampa is a beautiful place and it can get hot. Uh, and so a lot of times what we find in these sort of markets, uh, Tenants and residents really do enjoy a space that provides shade and a little bit of uh, solitude. Uh, and so having these caves, quote unquote, uh, I guess we should come up with a more eloquent term than caves, but uh, they provide a place that uh, for those that to get out of the sun, uh, a place that's uh, uh, secluded, uh, quiet, reserved, uh, just a nice place to, to enjoy oneself and uh, still enjoy outdoors, if, but uh, get a little reprieve from the heat and a little bit of uh, just a different uh, feel. And especially uh, on the smaller courtyard where we'll have, you know, some dog park areas, an area where you can let your dog run and then you can, you know, again, be, uh, be in a comfortable environment, and, you know, good for the owner and for the, the pet, so. Can you show the caves on the plans and elevations? Um, I can get a larger one to show you. Uh, it may be sh shown here on the smaller ones. It's just uh, one of the apartments has been left out, and it's a, a passage between the courtyard and, and the corridor. If you're really interested, I have it.
Well, you know, you'd really like this, the easiest way. Hold on a second. I've got the, the other landscape plan. That's a question I did not think would come up tonight. <laughs> well, we can. Can you see the hatched area? Here's the courtyard, and that's the cave. What it has is it has seating, and it's got a call it, call it a media wall. It's a wall for a TV, so you can sit in there, in the shade, um, and it makes it it's a much nicer transition from the courtyard to the interior corridor than a hallway. So. Is there any barrier between the garage and the Garage level. I'm sorry. I'm looking at a pool over garage at seventh floor, and a courtyard. So there's not garage parking on the seventh floor. Is that no. correct? No. The, the way the ramping it is, that you'll ramp up to, and you'll see there's a ramp down. So it ramps up at it. You know, so it ramps up ends, and then the pool deck sits on top of that. So the so the, the second smaller courtyard is off of the pool. It's below the pool. It's at the, it's not off of the pool. It'll be down on the, the ground, ground level. Floor. Uh, Is there anything separating the that small courtyard from the parking garage? Uh, there's a the wall. Uh, it's right here. It's my camera. No, it, here. Mm -hmm. There on the in, we have the elevations of the interior courtyard. It'll be uh, brick and then pre-cast garage. Okay. Yeah, I, I would also like to thank you for the uh, for the photo essay on the on the, the buildings there. And was there any thought given to uh, uh, like the hospital that used to be across the street? There was a really fairly substantial cornice that was not at the top of the building, but it was like at the level of the fifth floor. And it seemed it seemed like some of your elevations might benefit from from a. a you know, a, a good cornice someplace. Um, uh, I think we have a pretty, uh, pretty good cornice uh, the way it is now. Um, I mean, this will read, we had the top, uh, which has a lot of detail and thickness, and then we have a flat area, and then we have another horizontal banding. So that whole area will read as a cornice. Of course, that continues all the way around. So I think, it, you know, projecting, and it's it's got some detail and, and, and some gravitas to it. I think perhaps the, the, the hospital building, perhaps because it was a little smaller, it, it, it appeared to be a little bit more, a little bit stronger there. Yeah. But What's the, what is the, the vertical dimension? It's, it's really too hard. Is it, uh, it's really difficult for us to see there. What's the vertical dimension on that, on that uh, the cornice that you were just pointing at? Yeah. Yeah, Matt, you got good eyes. Can you read that? Well, we don't 
don't have a dimension here. Yeah, I think the total amount would be three, at least six feet. Because we have two large projecting details, mm -hmm. which has that's probably over a foot each. And then we have this flat spot, which would have a nice shade and shadow to it. So there was an attempt to make a really uh, impressive uh, projecting cornice. Obviously, as we work through final design and wind loads and, and other factors, I don't have a, you know, a large impact on, on how that actually works. Right. Yeah, it's, um, let me pull this out. Oh, I see which one you're talking about. Yeah. You're referring to this corner. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's kind of an odd detail, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of mannerist. It's like, you know, it, it's almost too big, but it really, you know, it really is sort of the defining element for me on that. It's like um, that was going to be the top of the building and uh -huh. under construction. They said, well, let's add uh, the next floor and continue a parapet around on top. Mm -hmm. That may have, in fact, happened. They got just a little bit more money. And <laughs> right. Yeah, those nuns from uh, St. Saint, Saint <laughs> Joseph's. The Sisters of Allegheny. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, if you would please, I would like you to, if you will, do a slow walk again uh, around the perimeter of this site with your development. Uh, I'm curious to uh, determine with you uh, the nature of the detail of the base of your building, the ins, the outs, uh, what's happening with your terracing, uh, because we do recognize that uh, you have a, a large development going on here and you're dealing with some critical fall along your street lines. Uh, I'm particularly interested at your 7th and uh, Florida uh, intersection and what's happening there at that corner, as well as up the 7th Avenue, uh, not 7th Avenue, but as well as up Florida Avenue to the corner of Oak as well, too. Because there seems to be a lot of different things happening there, and the scale of your drawings, because of its large uh, nature, um, does not read very well, at least from our small screen. So here again is our retail element mm -hmm. at 7th and Florida. And what makes it so distinctive is that we have a line of columns that go down 7th a bit that create this deep arcade. It's not something you see a lot now where somebody says, oh, we have three feet recess, so we got uh, shade and shadow. We have a minimum of about 12 feet where I'm pointing, and the further east it goes, it gets wider to about 15 feet of depth of that arcade. And again, the, the flooring in it is going to be a paver that simulates the historic pavers on 7th Avenue. And we have sconces, as you can see some sconces on the columns, so it's really going to be very nice. Uh, in the mid portion of this area, am I looking at planters here, or am I looking at some modulation of, if you will, a foundation line? That's our gesture to be a water table in this part, mm -hmm. to, break, to break up the big uh, walls that were unadorned 
So we added this brick water table, the contrasting brick, and it steps down, as you see, as the property steps down. What is happening with this entrance element on uh, the intersection at, at Oak and uh, Florida? Well, let's look, at the, let's look at the floor plan of that so we can have a better understanding of it. So that's where our clubhouse is. So we have this uh, column, and I'm not sure I, Matt, you might be able to help me with this. Is this seating? Yes. So we have this nice big recess, Steve and then the, the doors are set way back here. Mm -hmm. So we have a really nice open corner there. So this is can, really... Can you move that up a bit so we can see a little bit more of the plan? Um, per that's perfect right there. So these are basically your public rooms. Right, it's the commons, the clubhouse. The commons. It looks like we're looking at steps up in that corner. Hmm? It looks like we're looking at steps. Yeah. Yes. Okay, the, uh, uh, but you see it again on the elevation. What happens is you have the canopy that's going all mm -hmm. the way around it, where you have the uh, uh, the dashed line, and then you have this erosion of the corner, which gives it all the air. Mm -hmm. So it's special, and it it should be special. But it is not a formal entrance into the building itself. No, just the clubhouse. But from the clubhouse, you can get to the interior corridors, yes. Is the awning breaking a double-story glass at that corner? I'm sorry, is the awning what? Breaking through double stories of glass in your elevation? No, no. It, it does appear as though that might be a double height space, I guess, is the... Yeah. Yeah. the it, looks, Matt, it, it looks like there's a spandrel uh, that stops the glass after one story and picks up on the second story. Yeah, but it is a double height space to answer that question. In terms of the detail, it's not a full window wall. There's, uh, there's a, you know, two sets of windows. So okay. It's a separate two I don't know if we answered that that's what you're asking. What, yeah, what material is breaking the two? It's, it's a brick, just like consistent with the rest of that. Am I just reading this wrong? Well, it's perhaps maybe the uh, fault of the, of the rendering on the drawing. If you're looking at a spandrel panel, we're seeing glass, but perhaps that should have been like a brick infill. I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. It's a good question, though. Yeah, but it does speak to the fact that that, that it, you've you've activated both the the seventh uh, and Florida corner and that that corner up at seventh uh, and Oak, I believe it is. Yes. So there's that's a nice those are nice pedestrian amenities that we're getting. I agree about the pedestrian amenities. I kind of disagree that it's a big deal. If that is if they are in fact showing glass, that I feel the scale of that on that corner is inappropriate if this is all glass okay. so it's not just one a double it looks like it's shown like it's drawn like three panes of vertical glass and the awning draws through Transits the center in front of it the mm -hmm. third or the cent second thing of glass yeah yeah, yeah.
find it. It's like you've got next scale here. And like it doesn't work. Yeah. I actually think that's okay. It just dust <laughs> like a big corner. I mean, it's a you know, it's an important corner, so it gets a little more. It opens up more. I like the open. Yeah, mm -hmm. the open makes sense. Okay. It does break glass. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to tell whether the glass. I think the glass stops at the uh, bottom of the horizontal awning. I think it's just think a matter of consistency view. of the rendering. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just the view we see it. Yeah. Do y'all have a recommendation? Or questions right now? Do you have any yes. more questions? <laughs> uh, no, I have no further question at this time. Thank you. Do you have any um, examples of your hardware, your lighting, and all that on the outside there? Yeah, there was. Uh, an example of it. Well, it's the example of the finish. It's going to be a historic looking. Obviously, it's, we can't use knobs because we need to use levers for ADA, but it's going to be an oil rub finish, oil rub bronze finish. Okay, and how about the light fixtures? Uh, black or bronze. Here's an example. So here's an example of a post and a wall mounted. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Which I think are very appropriate for the district. Okay, and how about, um, I saw briefly some pictures of like the benches and the things in the park. Do you have more details there? Uh, yes, the, um, it's a, it's a uh, serpentine uh, precast concrete bench and uh, edging of the landscaping. an edging and a bench and then we this, can't we can't see that twig branch bench okay we can't see to the left there we go thank you is that concrete that twig bench yes okay yes thank you I, I believe it very quickly there will be little bars mm -hmm. on those to prevent the skate mortars from loving them too much. Right. Um, did you show it? I know you showed us a trash compactor door. Can you go back to the where the trash is going to be? Oh, the, oh, the door. Okay. Well, I saw yeah. the door, but can you kind of just show us on the site plan maybe and tell us how it's going to be um, concealed? Sure. sure. So, okay. here it is. It's concealed in the landscaping and it's, and it's got a, an awning over the, over the door. 
one of those necessary evils. We've set it back as far as we could and um, we're kind of limited on roll up doors. Okay, thank you. May we see your 7th Avenue elevation, please? Mm -hmm. Um, can you just sort of walk us through the elements that are making up your parking garage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the base, we created this rhythm of square openings instead of a long uh, opening to make it more <coughs> pedestrian friendly. And uh, those are clear openings yeah. from well, the exterior? Yeah, need ventilation to, to the parking garage. Right. right. And then up above, which is stucco, we've punctured it with openings that have a 42 inch high aluminum rail in black or bronze, and then a matching aluminum panel behind it. Um, so we have uh, some horizontal openings that again react to those big horizontal windows we saw on Tampa Heights Hospital. So instead of having a bunch of little windows, we've stretched it out. There are two strong vertical elements that break up the garage. Is that material the same as the, the remainder of the garage makeup? Yes, it's stucco, right. And the height of all of the railings, I believe you said 42 inches. Is that the same for the minimum um, sill height for those first floor openings? Yeah, it's code requirement. 42 for inches. Yeah. Is, do you know, and this might be a question for transportation, or maybe not, is 42 inches sufficient to block headlight yeah. pollution? That's, that's, that's pretty Minimum. high. It's pretty high, yeah. Well, uh, Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office, do you know that information? I would be speculating. I'm yeah. not an so, expert. Right. In transportation. Well, 42 block every single light. For That's every the question that was asked. Normal vehicle. Yeah, yeah for, for a typical vehicle, sedan, yes. Uh, for, I, 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 you can't, I have no idea. Like every mm -hmm. single car ever made, I, you can't <laughs> say yes to that. But yes. Can you, do you know the dimension, the width of your parking garage element in total? Um, well, it's normally about it's normally about 60 feet per bay. So there's two bays. So I'm I'm assuming it's 120, 130 feet. Um, and you said, I just wanted to confirm, all windows are a minimum of four inches recessed off of the exterior of the building? That's correct. And what is your sill and header heights? And, and is there, do you have something like that, Delaney, I see on some windows it looks like there's like a cast sill, and then there are some that look like they don't have a sill well, on the exterior? No. In a brick wall, it has a brick sill. In a stucco wall, it has a stucco sill. It does it have the same dimension, the height, same height? Um, it can. Uh, let me let me see. Cause hold on a second. Here's. 
here's the stucco cell. So it's, it's a, approximately the same as the brick sill. Do you know what the dimension of the, the height of those cells it are? Uh, well, the brick cell is three and a half because that's the approximate size of a standard brick in Rolox. And this is probably about three and a half or four. And then it can be whatever. Same question for the header. Yeah, they would have the same. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So it's approximately four inches in, in a stucco wall. And then in a brick wall, it's going to have a soldier course of brick, which will be about seven and a half inches, because that's what a brick is. But, I mean, if you would rather have seven and a half inches of stucco header, that's not a problem. Can you confirm your roofing material? Excuse me? Your roof material? Roofing? The flat roof or the... Both. Well, the flat roof is uh, modified bitumen, usually. And then the sloped roofs are fiberglass shingles and standing seam metal. Um, it looks like, and can you just confirm, that your door and windows in most instances butt right up against one another. There is no relief between them. Oh, there is relief between them, yes. Let me get to that window schedule. Probably a, a metal jam between them. Probably aluminum. There is no. It's not a like a four or eight inch piece. It's, it's a narrow so that the windows and doors are all part of the same system. I don't think I have any additional questions at this point. Does anyone else? No. Right. Aye. The applicant is allowed five minutes for rebuttal. Um, well, we thank you for your questions, and we hope we answer them uh, um, to your satisfaction. Uh, this is not complete construction documents. Things will get refined as we move forward and uh, any questions you have we hope you can leave it to your able staff to uh, you know review and approve them and one of the things like you brought up was between the doors and the windows in, in detailing it you know it may end up being four inches or six inches um, this is just diagrammatic uh, for the uh, windows and door schedule. And it may not be uh, modified bitumen. There may be a, you know, a single ply roof, but it's got to keep the water out and it won't be seen. Thank you. Um, before you um, close, um, Ms. Lund, is there still that pending DET application? 
Yes, there is still, um, I believe, a transportation design exception that um, is pending approval at this property. What is that? What? Is that? <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> Dennis Fernandez, Architecture and Historic Preservation Manager. As with any design exception that's pending review, we just ask that if you move towards a motion, you make that uh, design exception approval c a condition of your approval. Do we know what the request is, the design exception? It, it's regarding a release of an ease. There's an easement, I believe, um, that's associated with the design exception for the transportation. Oh, it's, um, we agreed with the city as part of the purchase of their lot exact language of that is not uh, oh, I <laughs> sorry I just yell into the ether um, saying that that was part of the purchase agreement with the city on the city lot is that we agreed to give them a, an easement along North Florida but since the exact location of the future uh, t-stop is uh, unknown uh, the city said we'll handle that when we <laughs> when we know where it's going to go that way we write it the right way uh and so that is what it is and so we've already agreed to it it's in the contract but the exact language yes we're going to work with the city to figure out wherever they want it sure mm -hmm. and there are no other waivers or anything associated with this okay great we'll close the public hearing and the commissioners will discuss the case To a certain degree, I think this project's come a long way since the first time we've seen this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm particularly pleased with the um, uh, the pedestrian nature around the perimeter of this site. Um, you have that immediate brick base for uh, the development, which really anchors you know the site to the landscape to the public way. Um, and the rest of the tower, the rest of the buildings being in their neutral stucco become really a neutral background. And this is not an unusual you know, change of, of, of affairs in a, in a taller building where you'd have you know, uh, a richer palette of materials on the lower ground floor levels, mezzanine level, maybe a next level or two, and then things get dramatically simpler again, as well as and also in this case, we have, a, I think in this case, uh, seen tonight uh, a fairly well-developed cornice and horizontal banding system which really ties all the individual elements together as well as giving that building a cap the cap it needed not just the individual towers but the whole mass a cap and I think uh, uh, the, the overall composition in spite of being a block by block you know sized large building um, wants to work I, th I think I think we're looking at something that that that's a, that, that bridges the appropriate nature between the forces of development for this property uh, and uh, the uh, contextual nature of, uh, of 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 this pedestrian gateway point for the city. I agree. I think that they did a really good job too um, breaking up the parking garage. It looks better than before um, with the airways or it's not a window but mm -hmm. the, um, that looks nice and the railing as well um, it's definitely improved I see a nice place for a boat banner <laughs> oh I was missing that the bolt banner yeah okay <laughs> um, I am also encouraged um, there are certain aspects of the project that I am that I'm not a big fan of um, but I am also not the owner. <laughs> um, I'm still not a, I, I'm still not a fan of the, of the hip roofs. Um, I went by a building that is, uh, I think it's between Grace and State and Howard and Armenia. Also, you know, it goes all the way from between Howard and Armenia. Um, and it, uh, it's a big apartment building. It wraps around a garage. And uh, it seems to fit in the neighborhood very well. 
Um, this building, I think, is I, I sometimes feel that the that the elevations are a little nervous, um, but I really feel that the that the uh, the two small cornices and the band in between at the top is a unifying ele element, and it really I think is very helpful. And uh, even more, it could be uh, given the, our ability to screen or to uh, uh, print things now, and, and that it perhaps could be a great location for some, some decorative art of some sort uh, that recalls the, what would have gone on there at, at the very high quality buildings that, uh, that we, that we uh, think of from that, from the period when uh, the, uh, when this district was, was under construction, which I think is about 1890 to 1945. I'm looking at you, Dennis, to help me out. Thank you. Um, and I also really liked the uh, portion of the essay that dealt with the expansion of the hospital, because sometimes when we have a large building, it seems like you can make up a story that goes along with its expansions. And this, these are just, I'm just sort of speaking about the further development of the of the project, um, where it begins to accommodate a, a richer uh, uh, variety of architectural expressions, perhaps. Um, but I am uh, I am very pleased with the direction that it is headed in. That's all I've got. I agree that we've seen a lot of really wonderful improvements to the last time we saw the project and the presentation was much more thorough, which allows us to understand the project better. Um, I still find the garage to be very 21st century garage key at 120 mm -hmm. feet wide yeah. as a stucco and aluminum railing com com composition. Um, we see them throughout the city of Tampa and within our districts treated with a lot more consideration, a lot more, either we differentiate the materials to break up 120 feet of garage or we screen the remainder of, I understand that it has to be open space, I'm not saying to close it, but we screen what would be large open windows for ventilations with something more thoughtful. Um, than the aluminum railings and nothing above. Um, it still feels like the part of the building to me that is not paid attention to as well. Um, I think we there are there are several items that need sort of closure or mm -hmm. development as the project moves forward, and I think that those should all be discussed if anyone does care to make a motion tonight before that goes forward. Um, like what specifically? So you like additions? Uh, like all of the roofing materials need to be finalized. Look. Um, mm -hmm. I think the condition of how doors meet windows really needs to be thought out and developed. We've got like a lot of large, what are drawn currently as components that are all mashed together, which is not something we typically see in the Tampa Heights district. We, we also saw many examples tonight from the applicant um, and many of them were explicitly shown to have given precedence for their door and window patterns or their window patterns. Uh, many of them did have very dominant sill and header development so that we get this, this pattern and not mm -hmm. just glass breaks in a brick or fiber cement wall. I'd say, I, I almost would, would say like as the material palette develops any new additions or any 
materials to be approved by staff because I do think this they're still far from construction and I think that the material palette is subject to some serious shifting. Yeah. Their hardware needs to be finalized. There was a comment about the corbels in the photo not, not matching what they're presenting today. I'm not sure in material or finish, but I'd say generally the, the corbels need to be finalized with staff. The design exception approval needs to be in any conditions. May would would you mind putting the rendering on the on the screen of that Oak Avenue elevation? So you had asked about a cornice band, mm -hmm. and we talked about it being about approximately six feet tall. Am so, I um, yes, and I'm not sure that that, I'm not exactly sure that that dimension is, is, is complete because it, it does have to do with wind loading because it's just a, you know, a wall that's up there, mm -hmm. needs to be supported. Um, and that's be between the very top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, between those two. And then we have a, an area that could that would perhaps be decorated as a frieze in older buildings. Um, what I'm seeing here is that I and something that I had not noticed before, and I may want to actually. We can reopen the case if we need to. Yes, because there's a lot of there's a, all of the the panelization. Uh, there's a reveal at each of the panels yes. that appears to be painted black or is it I don't know if that's a shadow line it, it's a it's a it's a function of the of the rendering I think I think we're seeing the reveal line but if we if you want to ask we can ask um, I have move. to make a motion yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I move that we briefly reopen the the uh, uh, public hearing. the public hearing I'll second the motion all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. I'm sorry Saul could you the rendering, the rendering seems to show that the reveals between the panels are painted a darker color than the than the finish on the on the surface. Is that correct, or is that just they were trying to yeah. delineate the size of the panel for some reason? Yeah. Saul Fleischman, Fleischman Garcia Architecture. Um, now they're exaggerated by the renderer. Those would be standard uh, control joints or. Uh, control joints, crack joints, and, right. and stuck on. Yeah. So the approximate dimension of the joint would be? Oh, a quarter to a half inch. And they're meeting 
right at corners. There's no beveling or. There's no caulk in them. Or it's, it's standard what you do to, to break down a, a field of stucco to a maximum of 144 square feet to avoid crackage. But we've ex you know, accentuated it to make a point that we're trying to create smaller uh, panels of stucco as opposed to just smooth contemporary look. So it really, it helps the architecture, it helps break down the scale, but it's exaggerated. Thank you. While we have you, the cornice band um, that is showing on your drawings reads less dominant because the material is changing in the center back to that fiberboard and, and it's painted. So I think we're losing some of that bold delineation that we see. Is that the intent or is the intent for that, that whole, whether it be six, in, six feet or otherwise, to be the same material? Or same appearance. It's all stucco up there. But they're painted different colors. They're painted different colors okay. to accentuate the horizon, horizontal bands, which are so prevalent in the district. Thank you. Any other questions? The applicant is allowed five minutes for a vote. <laughs> uh, good evening, if I, if I just may add, it's very uh, common with these larger projects. Um, you don't have an opportunity to uh, review as many of them uh, in Tampa Heights, but the staff sees a number of them uh, in, in areas such as Ybor City. Um, for there to be sort of these uh, outstanding items that haven't been totally defined yet because construction level documents haven't been produced. Right. So um, an approach that's been used is to create sort of general topics, uh, say for instance, window placement and delegate that to staff as an issue that we continue to work with the designers uh, with until the final construction documents are produced so mm -hmm. it's a little bit um, perhaps a, a more uh, prolonged discussion than you see on a single family residence but it is something that the staff's engaged in before thank you and, and also i think you're concerned about uh, now that we've got the, the renderings up, when you're in the stucco, the window headers are, or the, the what would be a lintel, mm -hmm. right, is painted a different color so that... We get that. Yeah. So we get that definition. Five minutes. Right. The applicant has five minutes for a rebuttal. I think besides the many references to buildings in or were in the historic district, this is really a high quality project that you don't often see. It's first class construction, finest materials. I think it's gonna make a great entry project for the Tampa Heights Historic District. Thank you. Do you mind leaving that while we chat? Do you have do you have a rendering that shows the parking garage area? saw from the previous uh, elements of the elevations, you know, the garage does have that brick base. And I think the, one of the key elements here that's missing uh, on this garage elevation, that, that 120 plus, plus or minus feet, is the lack of articulation within that stu those stucco fields that we see on the residential towers in some fashion. I think that if, if this garage elevation face, this street face, shared to some degree the same kind of articulation that we see on the, brick, on the elevation towers, mm -hmm. 
we would have less of a problem as to what's happening here in terms of a mass. Mm -hmm. We recognize it's a garage. Mm -hmm. We recognize it has certain opening requirements. That the part that's missing is, is some manner of articulation when you go stuck in fields. So the articulation is locked in by their PD. Mm -hmm. um, but it just reads as one, like we've got, you know, brick, blue painted, railing, brick, and neutral painted railing blue like we've got this nice break mm -hmm. even if this reads almost flat but this is not going to change That's not gonna and change. then we've got this 120 feet of mm -hmm. the same thing yeah it just we have the rhythm broken of the, up of like the opening that. the railings the solids the, there's a lot of solid mm -hmm. right there's a lot of solid and it's all reading currently is the same material right mm -hmm. Maybe even if they did that, you know, what you thought was painted black, mm -hmm. that sort of a dis, uh, connection. Well, if they, perhaps if if the uh, floor slabs were were accentuated, so there was a there was a, a a line of some sort between the, because those are pretty, they're shown they are not that thick, but they are shown as being sort of like eighteen inch, These, yeah. yeah, so there would be a, a more horizontals. Um, that could very very easily be developed with with some stucco mm -hmm. detail and even in so like in the horizontals of the railings we see that like separate banding like what you're mm -hmm. saying so we've got like what, what's showing is white neutral white railing opening mm -hmm. white neutral white railing opening so just and then that's broken by a whole different material and then we see the same pattern again and then it's broken by a whole third appearance of a material where our parking garage is just blue painted and mm -hmm. we've got some little railings mm -hmm. poking through so just more of a consistent flow throughout that whole something to break that yeah but I think it's doable yeah totally I mean, you know you have a, you, you have your header elements you have your sill elements uh, you have your uh, uh, panel subdivision elements mm -hmm. um, you could strike that line at the floor line as a horizontal line. There's a lot of different things that can happen here that, that can mitigate this blankness and make it relate more to what's happening to the towers on either side. Yeah, and I think that could also be done at the staff level too, mm -hmm. um, you know, with their consideration of the different materials. Did you um, close the public hearing? No. Oh, the public hearing is closed. I have no further comment. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 22-145 for the property located at 1701 North Florida with the following conditions. First, that is conditioned on the design on the approval of the transportation design ex exception. Also, to be coordinated with staff, the uh, finalizing the roofing materials, hardware, window door details, corbeling, and greater articulation of the garage wall. Because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the Tampa Heights Historic District Design Guidelines of the City of Tampa for the following reasons. Because the alignment, rhythm, and spacing, the maintenance of materials from within the district, and the trim and detail link between the old and between the older structures and this new structure are, cons are all consistent with the existing uh, um, built environment of the district. I'll second the motion. All in favor? No. Oh. Do you, oh. uh, does the applicant understand and approve of the conditions? The applicant understands and approves of the conditions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Motion carries.
We can take it. We can get out this front over here. You want, you want to make a motion? Do it. I don't know. Five minute recess? For a five minute recess? Can you just make the, okay. take a recess for five minutes. Right. We're going to take a five okay, minute recess. Long, Commissioners Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff. The next item on the agenda this evening is case ARC 22-110 for the property located at 310 East Ross Avenue. Um, this is also in the Tampa Heights Historic District. The request is for a certificate of appropriateness for new construction of a primary structure, an accessory structure, 
with site improvements. Um, this property is located on the north side of Ross Avenue between Morgan and Jefferson Streets. And at uh, this time, I will move into the photo presentation here. The subject property is um, shown in green here on the 1920s Sanborn map of the area. You can see again, it's um, on Ross Avenue between Morgan and Jefferson Streets. Um, you can see historically there was a two-story residence on this property with an accessory structure in the rear. This is the location map of um, showing the property again in green within the Tampa Heights Historic District boundaries. And the modern day aerial map showing the subject site here. Um, it's currently a vacant property. This is looking north into the subject site from Ross Avenue. This is the property directly to the west. This is a non-historic, non-contributing structure that was built um, right before the historic district was enacted. This is the property directly to the east. It is also vacant. Looking across the street to the south, um, we see this non-contributing property on Ross. Here we're looking east along Ross Avenue. So I think this view is to the west. And this is to the east on Ross. So the subject site's to your left. This is the alley behind the subject site. Here we're looking um, west in the alley. So this would be looking toward um, Morgan Street. And here in the alley, we're looking east toward Jefferson Street. And then looking into the subject site to the south from the alley. And that concludes the photo presentation. So at this time, I'll ask the applicant to come forward to present the request. Good evening. Uh, Ralph Schuler, 2401 North Howard Avenue. And I have been sworn. Uh, as you guys remember, I was here a couple months ago. We reviewed this project. I think uh, we've made some good progress here that I think should get us uh, um, a product that you guys feel much more comfortable with and um, feel good, hopefully, to uh, send me on our way this evening. Um, just to quickly review previously the site plan, which really hasn't changed all that much, if at all, is on, again, the property is on Ross Avenue, north side. We have a, a very deep but narrow lot, 50 by 131. Uh, property uh, is on the north side of Ross. We have a nice wide alley, 14-foot alley on, uh, on the rear. We've centered the, the house uh, basically on, on the lot because, again, it's a narrow lot. Um, we have one-story accessory structure on the uh, facing alley, pretty large front porch, very large rear porch. We do have a very large grand oak tree here that uh, that's its protective radius and uh, obviously will be remaining. It is in the right of way. Haven't really changed the, again, the site plan very much, really working on what it looks like and the detailing. Just very quickly, that's, that's a second story. And then um, some space within the attic. There we go. Here, and then the roof plan. changes we made here are mainly on the front elevations. We used to have a gable end element here that was out of um, brick. We have removed that. We have 
taken this brick base and made it taller, make it like a, a sitting stoop type here uh, on the porch, which now is completely covered by uh, a second story balcony. That second story balcony has, has been changed to, to all wood railings, vertical pickets and, and wood hor verticals and horizontals. Uh, we have retained our, our, our double sets of French doors and um, this area, um, we've, the gable end, we've changed to um, add this little rake detail of, of, a, of a hip here to, as a transition. And then this used to be board and batten. We've now changed that, which is a, uh, a hardy or um, shake material. All of this uh, is still at the same pitch, which is a 10-12 pitch, a very dramatic pitch, which I think um, helps with the overall expression. We've, we've added these, these double columns. Uh, we used to add, again, only two sets of double columns. We've added a third. This, this entry is now covered. We've simplified the design, but also, I think, uh, made it more in line with other structures within the district. The rear of the house kind of follows the same vernacular, same, same kind of uh, detailing. The difference is we just have accentuated um, piers at each um, double set of columns. And then in between, we have found stucco foundation, stucco foundations on the two sides, which I'll show you in a minute. Again, uh, hardy board uh, siding, two foot overhangs, and And this is the east elevation. So the east elevation um, sh shows these these dormers that, that penetrate through through the main um, very dramatic roof. And and this is again shows how how the, the front porch works. The rear porch again uh, is is tucked in underneath the second story. Um, we have a skirt board, the double skirt board that runs continuously around the um, foundation will have stucco uh, um, kind of water table below. All, all of the windows are uh, single hung and they, and they vary uh, based on size uh, if they're six over six or uh, some are eight over eight. The, the, the rear accessory structure here, again, is a little taller, but still um, a one-story, mainly because we can ha have an ability to have a double-stack garage with uh, a lift in it. This is the west elevation. Similar, obviously, to the east. The main difference is we, this is where our, our stair is. So our stair landing is here. So we have a nice double window with a with a eight inch um, break in, in between it. And then the second, uh, I'm sorry, the another dormer, slightly larger dormer that, that would again align with with our our staircase. S similar uh, again front front and rear of, of the porches. almost a mirror image of the, of the east elevation for the accessory structure. The north elevation which faces the alley. The south elevation which faces inward to, to the uh, house. Last time uh, we did not have this extra window. We've added this window per, per your comments previously. And then we have some, some egress in doors, one is to the garage and one is to a, a future pool pool bath that uh, has yet to be designed is the pool and how that would work. Typical construction for a house of this, this size, I apologize, this, this, um, we're probably going to make, make, we, we're going to make this probably out of wood. 
but still treat it as a roof. So we, ha we have to put some underlayments and, and, and waterproof it, um, but um, I meant to change that to a, a wood material. The superstructure itself is, is blocked for the first two floors and then is a pre-engineered roof truss system here. All of this will be, of course, clad in hardy board, so none of it would really be seen. The, the typical wall section is more like this, and again, I, I'll, I have some details that will help help here. Um, but the windows would be recessed as, as normal uh, on, on all the projects that I present to you. It's a uh, three to four inch recess depending on on exactly how it how it uh, fits um, but the vinyl window um, you sit it on a, on a wood buck again we have details that, that show how that works um, skirt board again and some uh, a nice size of overhang at the window I'm oh, sorry at the uh, at the soffits Corner trims, large corner trims. Uh, this is a recessed door detail. I'm sorry, that's a window casement. That's the casement. Of the, uh, this is a, a middle section where we have double window, double doors. Sorry, double window detail. S sill of, the, of a window. This is. Uh, This is the jam of the window, and then a door, a, a, a door casement. Hardware would be, or well, bronze or black. That'd be like a front door. This would be exterior lighting. Similar houses within the district. One, one about a block down the street. Take that out of, out of, out of, out of a turn, sorry about that. Uh, five V-crit metal roof. Brick veneer of, looks like gray. Um, front entry door with a three quarter light, six, six light window. And the window itself would be a Sierra Pacific style window here, which that just shows a uh, double hung, or uh, yeah, that's a double hung version. I think they make a single hung version. Here's the house, direct one block to the west has a sleeping porch, kind of similar to what we would do. Again, this is a covered version, but similar that we did. There is precedent in the district for a large porch with, with a, a second story above it. Um, this is, uh, our block is slightly to the east by about a half a block, but this block shows you a large, number of large structures similar to what ours would be in general. Different style of, of house, more Mediterranean revival, but also again, similar that we have a, a porch with, with, with a, a balcony above it and um, similar in, in scale. This is a, sorry, this is more, more like what we would probably end up with Forget the trim part. It's a, it's a uh, <clears throat> single hung window instead of a double hung window. I think I 
don't have a, a, a light shown on the on, on my elevation, but I would propose to do a more of a carriage style with lights above the like like this um, carriage style garage door, which I think is um, more appropriate. So in review, again we, we came came back two months ago. I think we had uh, some, some, some confusing details. I think we really wanted to try and um, clarify and simplify the design, looked at what was happening on our street in particular on Ross Avenue, which does have a number of, of, of good examples of uh, what essentially looks like a frame vernacular house. I think our, our house um, has, has some unique characteristics, but, but that are also uh, take within the vernacular again of, of oops, sorry, I didn't realize this, this was within the vernacular that we're looking for. And um, with that, I'd take your questions. Okay, Commissioners Elaine Lund, Historic Preservation Staff, with the staff report. Um, staff finds that this application is consistent with the Tampa Heights design guidelines. We met with the applicant um, previously prior to this hearing and reviewed uh, the drawings and the um, changes that have been made since the last public hearing with them um, and believe the conditions that were listed in the staff report have been, the majority of them have been addressed and I have no additional concerns at this time. So I'm available if you have questions, thank you. And, and just Kamari pettis Smackle from the city attorney's office, uh, just as a reminder, there is a pending design exception application that it has to be a, a condition. Thank you. If anyone is here to speak for or against this project, please come up now. Thank you. Seeing no one, uh, we'll start asking questions. Um, Mr. Schuler, the the, um, the window mullions are inside the between the two panes of glass, or they're on the uh, on the exterior. Those, those would be on the exterior. Okay. They're not single, they're still one single pane of glass, but they're, but, they're, but they're not just some little tiny pieces of plastic between the volumes, no. Okay, so they're on the outside. Correct. So they're giving us the dimensional, the, the dimension look that we are interested in. Yes, sir. Thank you. No further questions. I like a lot of things that I see on your elevations. Um, I do have um, two questions for you. Uh, you have developed quite a bit of um, uh, brick detailing as part of this base uh, ground plane line. Um, on your side elevations, that's going to be an all stucco finish, correct? So here, I think you're talking about, let's, let's, so this is stucco here, and then these two other planes would be hardy board. That's a, a, a double layered skirt board, I would call it. Okay, so basically you're, you're almost doing like a water table there at that location. You, correct. To break yes, it but, all up. But, but stucco would only be the first plane. Mm -hmm. Um. If you would go back again towards your uh, front street elevation. Yep. Uh, just as a general question, um, in your gable, you show a pair of windows. Um, and can you, usually when we see windows in a gable sort of a situation, uh, they're of a more diminutive form than uh, what we typically see in, on the main floors of, of, the, uh, of the building. Typically, it's because it's an attic. Now, I know in this case, you have a habitable attic. Correct. It's still in that same vein. What is driving the size of these windows, or is it something that, that you would be open uh, to change their scale 
uh, to deal more, not so much being part of the overall face of the building, but also to be part of its own face at its gable end. So I think to some degree this is a unique in that we have a fairly large gable end, of course, because it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a large roof. Um, the steep roof, 10, 12 pitch roof. Um, and then of course we have a habitable room in there. It's a, it, it's a have to meet, at least a window has to meet egress. Mm -hmm. um, the, the side windows, which um, are, are these windows here and, and here in particular, would not meet egress. Okay, um, so egress is your driving form here. Well, but also I think scale and proportion are to some degree. I, I, I personally don't feel it's out of scale. I mean, I understand it's bigger than a typical all attic style window. I would agree mm -hmm. with you then that would be, but I don't feel that it's overly overly scaled for this um, this this particular house and its, and its proportions. And the last question I have is that I understand, uh, if you will, the plinth base for your porches. Um, and I see here a, a bold strike line at the top of, uh, of your column piers as well as your walls. What are we looking at here? Is this cast concrete of some yeah, sort? Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about this, this line here? That is correct, yes, sir. Yes, yes. That would be a, a precast cap. A precast cap. Correct. We plan on, on making that brick on both sides, of course. So not only the, the, the scene side, but the... But the the, the side, you know, that faces mm -hmm. the, the um, porch itself, and then that brick would have a, you know, a small little little angle to, to shed water uh, cap. And that would be consistent throughout the project, whether it's the front, which is, again, a more consistent wall, feels a little bit more private, and then, then, then the rear, which privacy is not much of an issue, it's, it's, it's open and, 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 more, and more inviting to what's gonna hopefully happen, whatever happens in the backyard. Thank you very much, sir. Um, can you explain what the request is for the design exception? Yes. So it is a, to some degree, a formality, at, but the typical, this a, a typical accessory structure, um, if it meets accessory structure setbacks, which are again the three feet on the side and ten foot for for a vehicular access, which is what this has, would be fifteen feet. We're asking for, for 22 feet, typically two stories are asked up to 22 and a half feet. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a design exception within the zoning to, to ask for that request. Uh, can you walk us through the setback dimensions and your elevation from grade and how that relates to surrounding um, setbacks and elevations from grade on sure. the street? Mm -hmm. Happy to. So from grade, I have a one foot 10 inches to the, to what is really that, that detail. It's really gonna be a two foot to the, to the finished floor from, from grade to the entry of the house. About then you know, one foot eight to the porch itself. Um, I have, a, we have some very tall ceilings. First floor is 11 foot four, second floor is nine foot two. Um, this dotted line is showing you what the requirements for the zoning are because it is an RM24 zoning. The zoning is slightly different than your typical zoning where it's 35 feet flat. Here it, it technically angles up and once you get to 30 feet, we meet within that little glass envelope. Uh, houses uh, on east and west of this are very typical of this dimension. Some very old houses, say like uh, the one I showed you with the sleeping porch might be slightly higher than that by five or six inches, but it generally, again, generally about the same height. Um, and uh, I think it contextually fits within, within the street. And then same thing for setbacks. So the setback, um, yes, there was a design exception, if you remember previously, uh, for another um, project on this site that didn't get built. We are matching that design set, which is a lot averaging. A lot averaging um, is at 14 feet, which is which is what the two houses to the west of an empty lot to to the east, and then we have a house facing uh, the opposite direction. So we basically took the two houses on on the west 
to come up with that number. Thank you. Um, so you have two, four sets of French doors on the front facade of this project. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any historic references for, for this design that you've brought forward? So houses within this district um, have doors and large windows and or secondary doors if they're turn of the century style houses. Um, we wanted these, again, these very large porches, 10 foot deep, 32 feet wide. And we wanted to have that ability for that indoor outdoor relationship. And we felt it was appropriate with properly scaled. Again, these are not sliders. These are not, these are French doors with uh, 10 or 15 light doors. And um, we, we felt that they're appropriate. Um, is there a specific example of a house in Tampa Heights that has doors like this? No. Um, may we, s go ahead. Oh. I just wanted to ask about the location of the HVAC units. Sure. If you could speak to that and to the uh, fencing. Currently, there are two AC units here and here. We're showing landscape screening around it. Uh, at some point, we will come up with a, a, a fence design and potentially maybe a pool. It's not been determined if, if, if that would come now or in the future. So we haven't really shown anything on purpose because uh, we would meet, of course, the standards set forth through, through staff on, on, on how that would, would look and, and its location, which is obviously would be back from, from the main house and, um, and fit within what neighbors have. Okay, thank you. Uh, may, may we see your accessory structure elevations? Uh -huh. So the, the east and the west are essentially the same. And then the north and south, which I have here somewhere. Uh, the, what you have is fine. Okay. <laughs> There's a note on the staff finding or staff report that says uh, consider the use of a skirt trim on the accessory structure in order to provide a better transition at the openings. Was that? So last time I had I had skirt trim here and we we were told to take it off, so we removed it. Okay. Simplified the design since it's an accessory structure. Have you considered um, like roof elements or? Um, other to cover the pedestrian entrances at the accessory structures? Say that again? Uh, at your pedestrian, at any door, uh, I believe you have a one foot overhang. Have, is, has consideration been given to put like a roofing oh, okay. structure Some, over yeah, the so doors? Something at, at, those, at those entries? Um, yeah, hold on. Let me, let me find where those are. <laughs> Over here. You're first in these two doors here. You're looking to have some sort of a awning or something? It's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so in this vernacular, you know, there's not a lot of examples of, of, of awnings like you're talking about. I mean, if we had one, it would probably be like a canvas style awning or something, but not something or, that. Or a roof element yeah but. right um, yes a, a, a little roof element I'm not sure you know it's not a porch it's not I'm not sure it's gonna add to the um, I do have a, a, a two-foot overhang and I understand where you're going with the question okay. but um, I'm not uh, again in the scheme of things if, if that backyard is developed properly I don't know if that would would, would add to the, to the expression can you just walk us really quickly through your uh, porch materials like Mm -hmm. Floor to ceiling. Yep. All right. So, again, brick, a precast cap. These are uh, hardy wrapped uh, columns. This would be a uh, hardy board trim board detail 
similar to what kind of what we were doing on on the skirt um, this would all be wood on vertical pickets and and supports um, the porch of the, of the of that is need to be waterproof would probably be finished with some sort of a tile um, I haven't picked the tile frankly um, and then of course hardy board uh, trim and, and all, all the accoutrements and the flooring material of the porch on the first level um, currently we show that as, as concrete similar to the score um, of, of the walkway coming up to the house and the ceiling the ceiling would be uh, a, a beadboard ceiling, true beadboard ceiling. So the only place we are seeing that cast stone is at that, that one trim element. That trim element, yes, both front and back. Um, is the intent on the rear elevation for the two sets of windows on the first floor to be the same size or different sizes? Talking about these two windows here? Yes. So. Uh, this is this th these two are of course in, in bedrooms mm -hmm. this one is, is is a dining room and this one is a kitchen so they all have different reasons for what they are um, so of course this is a much taller that's why we have the transom so this window and this window are, are the same window except this one has a transom above it because it's a taller window so we're trying to you know again establish a, a, a reason for for and and, a, and then again, this window and that window are are similar. And we've got just a really really tiny hip roof going over the second floor on the front and rear facades. Is that correct? It's like a couple feet. So we we so on the, the we have dormers. That's what these are. The dormers on each side. If that's but those are the only hip roofs. Um, I'm sorry, the, the little roof line oh, just this, above. Oh, yes, here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, uh, tri that is a uh, soffit overhang that then turns into a, uh, a five-feet metal roof, correct. What is the overhang? That's two feet. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Anybody else? I have no further question. All right. You have no. five minutes for a rebuttal. So um, again, I think we've made good progress. It, it's, it's a house that I think would is going to fit very nicely within this street. Um, it's a it's a deep narrow lot. I think the house uh, acknowledges that, but still has it's going to obviously have a, a pretty good presence. Uh, as it's a fairly large house, but um, there is some other houses within this street in particular that, that have the similar scale and proportion, and I think uh, will be a, a very nice asset to uh, Ross Avenue and Tampa Heights at large. I look forward to uh, getting it done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now close the public hearing, and commissioners will discuss the case. Quite frankly, I think uh, I find this uh, this change in this up, uh, uh, new gener uh, new regeneration for this uh, this house development uh, to uh, be quite charming. Um, it has its quirks, uh, but then of course uh, that is what vernacular is to begin with. In many respects, you know, a simple geometry with quirks. <laughs> we have a lot of variety in here. Uh, I think the effort to come through and 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 make the attempt to be as consistent as possible, particularly on the street front, um, uh, is to be applauded. There's a lot going on here, and it looks like it all fits together. I find this very charming. I also think it's um, it's very appropriate for the district. Um, it's a very simple. Uh, although it's block, it appears to be a wood frame. Uh, you know, it's a rectangular wood frame house, and then it has these kind of uh, uh, colonial revival windows uh, that kind of say to me, "Well, 
you know, the, the guy that built us wanted these really these nice windows, mm -hmm. and so he spent the extra money. At it. But there's a lot of windows. I'm sure that it, you know that the that they will, you know, there'll be a lot of daylight in the interior. Um, the front is very symmetrically done. Uh, the sides, not so much. That's all. That's always fine with me because you know we're responding to architectural, to to plan conditions on the inside. Um, and the the changes to the entrance, which I think had a you know it had a little there's a little shed over it of some sort. Much much better, and just the addition of the seating wall in front of the French doors really. Uh, changes the whole sort of the way that the way the house sort of welcomes you to the front door but not to these large french doors i think i think it's a a, a very good uh, design at this point do we want to discuss the um size of the windows in the gables at the front and rear facades i understand where they're coming from so uh, I'm not terribly disappointed about the matter. Okay. And then on the rear elevation, the, the thing that got me is like the perfection of the cemetery and then the, the change in the size of windows on the rear. <laughs> I, I understand why, but it's like such a slight change that, and like everything else is so perfect. Well, maybe the way to do it is I understand the issue with the kitchen. Well, it, maybe right. it's the maybe it's the other rooms the windows room that have to change to make height. it smaller. Yeah. Uh, but those dining room windows you want to have. I know that light. And oddly enough, in many, uh, I worked on the on the West Tampa Library, which is a very symmetrical building until you you start to look at it very carefully, and then it is not at all. Mm -hmm. And until you pointed out that those were two different windows, I had not noticed that. <laughs> so, I think it, uh, you know, in the rear, in the kitchen and dining room, I think it's, I think it's acceptable. All right. Um, if we, if a motion moves forward, we need to make sure there's a note about the design exception. And if that is for the set a, a, a accessory structure accessory structure setback. accessory structure setback. But just we don't need to I, say I, that. I, just I, just refer to the design I, exception. Just yeah. Um, if we could make sure to add a note to um, coordinate the drawings to reflect all material selections as discussed in today's case. And um, the second floor porch material is t still to be selected. If there are any other things that I missed, please feel free. But those were my little notes. No, I have nothing else on my list. Oh, but there's a fence that obviously needs to be. Oh, but we don't have. It's not at all. The no. fence in the pool will have to come back if Later. they okay. mm -hmm. make their way into the plan. If and when. Mm -hmm. It's a nice lot. Can you take a shot at this? Excuse me, me? Yeah. You're suggesting me again? Yeah. <laughs> Stephen. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, move to grant a certificate of appropriateness for the drawings and documents presented at this public hearing in ARC 22-110 for the property located at 310 East Ross Avenue because based upon the finding of fact, Oh, oh, for the for the property located at 310 East Ross Avenue with the following conditions. That the design exception is improved. That all material selections that have been discussed today, particularly the, uh, the flooring on the second floor porch, be approved by staff because based upon the finding of fact, the proposed project is consistent with the uh, Hi Tampa Heights Historic District design and guidelines for the city of Tampa for the following reasons. The massing and building form, the orientation and site coverage, and the trim and detail are all consistent with other buildings within the historic district. 
I will second that motion. Does the applicant understand and accept the conditions? I do. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go watch the hockey game. Sorry, just hit it. <laughs>